You're welcome back to Thursday's Off the Ball. Coming up a little bit later in the hour, we'll talk to the new Leash football manager, Mike Quirk. Football show from nine with Dan McDonald on a busy 24 hours at the FAI. And we'll check in with Damien Delaney as well. But I think we managed to get through the first week of the new year without talking about the GEA fixture schedule. Are we going to get through week two? Hell no. It is all kicking off. All kicking off with Donegal this evening pulling out of the McKenna Cup semi-final against Monaghan that was due to take place in Enniskillen this coming Sunday, citing player unavailability and player welfare concerns. Donegal reached the semi-final. They beat Derry last night. Here's what the Donegal manager, Declan Boner, had to say after the game. Whoever fixed the figures in the middle of this campaign, it's absolutely ridiculous. Uh, I don't know, do the colleges or the, the, the authorities in GA or, or also council, do, do they communicate or what? But it's left the situation because I said we have a lot of young lads they're all at third level some of them are on scholarships and they have to play with their colleges and that's the bottom line we always treat the McKenna Cup what the respect it deserves but if you can't put out a team you can't put out a team I'm not going to go around club players now that haven't done any work for the last three months to go and fill, fill numbers for, for the weekend you know but uh, we just wait and see even that, to a Tuesday night or, or, or would be an option to be quite on I know you know and Again, talking to the medical team, and there a lot of those guys are playing a lot of football. I mean, this is I said this at the weekend, it is crazy stuff that we're playing. You know, some of these guys could be playing four matches in the space of of, of ten days, basically, mm -hmm. and uh, it's it's very very difficult. So we've got to manage that there. And in terms of of, of the player welfare, we've got to be very very careful, mm -hmm. uh, as I say. But at this stage where we stand in the middle, we just don't have, we won't have the numbers to to to, to field. Yeah, that is Declan Boner uh, saying last night that they may not be able to fulfil that fixture this coming Sunday against Monaghan and it turns out in the last couple of hours they've decided they can't fulfil the fixture. There was a meeting earlier today as well with the Ulster Council where Donegal had proposed maybe moving the game back to Tuesday but they were voted down, we understand, in a 5-4 vote and they decided not to go ahead with the game this coming Sunday. To chat about this and the issues surrounding the schedule and around player welfare as well, I'm joined by the former Donegal footballer Eamon McGee. Evening Eamon. Evening, how are you? And also Jamie Wall, who is manager with the Mary I Fitzgibbon Cup team. Evening, Jamie. Evening, lads. How are you? So, Eamon, your boys have fairly thrown their toys out of the pram with this, haven't they? <laughs> Jeez, I wouldn't go that far now. Um, I think it's just they've responded in kind. And, you know, to be honest with you, I'm glad that it's been done because, you know, this is the a Cup. What's the big deal about Ulster, Ulster Council moving it a few days? And, uh, I've always said that until you affect the county game and the, fix the fixtures this year is not going to be solved. So hopefully this is the, this is the start of it now. Jamie, Declan Boner said there that they want to treat the McKenna Cup with the respect it deserves. In a way, ha by pulling out, have they actually treated the McKenna Cup with the respect it deserves? It's a pre-season competition that really we shouldn't read much more into it than that. Yeah, they absolutely have, but I suppose that depends on how you define... Uh what level of respect these competitions deserve. If you were to ask me personally, um, I don't think they deserve an awful lot of respect. Um, they're Like you said, they're pre-season competitions. I think I had a pop earlier on on Twitter saying that it was like the Charity Shield and some fella got back to me saying it wasn't even the Charity Shield, it was the pre-season tour of China. So um, I think yeah, I think that tells you all you need to know about the general attitudes among among most people on the ground towards these competitions. From a playing point of view, Eamon, did, did you take the McKenna Cup seriously at any stage? No, you didn't. You didn't take any McKenna Cup. You're coming off Christmas now. You're in terrible shape, and, and it's just a better matter of getting through the McKenna Cup. If you, at the later stage of my career, where I had a bit of credit in the bank, you know, you could say I'm just not playing it. But you, you just bluffed your whole way through it and managed to get to the league. Um, and no way did you take the McKenna Cup seriously. Mm. Um, and you know, we we have fixtures this year. I say it again, we have fixtures this year, and there's just no space for the pre-season competitions. But it is there, and even if you're just taking it as a pre-season tour or tournament or whatever way you want to approach it, why not just play the game? I do understand. Declan Boner said they've 13 players playing Sigurdsson on Sunday. They've got players out with the flu. They've got players out injured, and obviously there's probably a couple of senior players who just want to rest at this time of the year. But surely there's enough fringe players in Donegal that you go and fulfil the fixture. There, listen, there probably is. There probably is, yeah, and you could fulfil the fixture. Like it behind it all, there's a lot of good players in the league. that would, you know, you get together. But it's about making a point too. Like for for us to clash with Sigerson and for for players that are just on the fringes of the squad that want to be playing for Donegal and want to put their name in, in the manager's uh, frame of mind, then why 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 make them make that decision? Why put that conflict on their on their schedule? And you know, I think 
you can fulfil. There's plenty of players there, but it's just about making that statement to the Ulster Council and probably beyond that headquarters. Yeah, Jamie, you, it doesn't work in anybody's favour because while it is pre-season, we're only a couple of weeks away from the first round of the Allianz Leagues and Donegal take on Mayo in the first round. It'll be a big game. It'll be a hotly contested Division 1. Declan Bonner wants his players with him at this time. Like, they should be in a strength and conditioning programme and imagine building up towards the league. Instead, they're away at Sigerson Cup. With Hurling, they'll be away at Fitzgibbon Cup and I'd imagine as a Fitzgibbon Cup manager, you don't want players to be in the midst of a strength and conditioning preparing for the new season. You want them 100% absolutely flying right now and you expect them giving their all when they're playing for their college yeah you do and I suppose but there, there is an element of reality from our side too and I think the college's management have always been very um, very understanding of the fact that look we do know the inter-county managers they do have first call and we're very much at their mercy a lot but you know like I understand that I, I even have a degree of sympathy for Declan with what's going on but I mean you know, there's a Munster Hurling League final on this weekend and UCC will be without, or sorry, not UCC, Cork will be without 16 UCC players that are playing Fitzgibbon Cup the following day, and Tim O'Mahony who's playing for us, and the CIT contingent. Limerick are going to be without guys playing for UL and Mary I. So, I mean, this is a, a problem throughout the GA. So, to be honest, I'm actually delighted with the way this whole thing has has finished up in that maybe it has just shown the GA the untenability of these, mm. of these competitions. Like, uh, like I said, look, we understand as colleges, we don't get 100% access to the players. We're actually very okay with that. These competitions for us are about these players get to represent the college and a lot of the club players then get to play with them. A lot of the time, you are just trying to get guys together once and twice, make a bit of a team. And the competitions are primarily about enjoyment. You know, these guys can be on their strength and conditioning programs. They're training quite hard without going into details. Like I know for a fact, certain counties down in Munster, the hurling counties and around the area there, like, I know their training schedules at the moment, and I know they're crazy. Those guys aren't training an awful lot with us, and we're very okay with that. So we bend an awful lot too. So I just think the whole thing, it's its a its a bad situation, and it's a tough situation for Donegal to be in too. So like Eamon, I'm delighted they pulled out of it. I think it might finally kind of force the hand of the GA to say, do you know what? These competitions are a little bit of a waste of time. Mm. The attitude isn't there. The appetite isn't there, you know? So the pre-season competition is a waste of time. And then like, the Sigurdsson Cup and Fitzgibbon Cup have always held a sort of strange place in the GEA calendar, probably because of their positioning within the GEA calendar. And you talk to players and they generally love playing in the Sigurdsson Cup and the finals weekend can always be a, a brilliant, memorable weekend. And some of the quality, particularly now that you see some of the games on television, can be right up there. But in terms of where players are, like you're talking about their strength and conditioning and not seeing a huge amount of them. Like players coming in and playing in games over the next couple of weekends, are they at 100% or do you feel actually they're at 70% building towards 100%? Well, I don't think 70 is fair to be, to be fair to them. Like, you know, because they all, in fairness, a lot of intercounty managers do allow them to kind of break away from the odd gym session to do a bit of hurling and stuff. But we're under no illusions. They're not at full tilt. They're, they're not at the tilt that they're at in June and July. But by the same token, the standard of these games is massively high. Like, I would say, you know, the GA are missing a trick in not, you know, moving away from these preseason meaningless competitions and trying to really kind of promote the 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 the, the colleges competitions. I mean, look, one example, and it was something that I got wrong. I was very against moving the club games back to January, but I actually went to see Barcelona and St Thomas's the weekend, and all of a sudden, without a national league to clash with it, there was an incredible atmosphere down in Limerick for that game there was an appetite for it, there was a standard there, and all of a sudden I thought, you know what, maybe if January was for the club and the colleges and that the inter-counties were, were getting going in, in that sense, maybe that would be a better way of doing things, you know. Um, but like I said, look, we know they're not at, at, at that full tilt. But by the same token, you know, you're saying the guys are playing games, they're going away from the training and playing these games. But you're asking them to play games anyway in these preseason mm. competitions. The only difference is they're games that they don't give a hoot about, you know. What's the ideal scenario then from your point of view, Jamie? Is it that any player who's selected in the Fitzgibbon squad gets January to that Fitzgibbon squad, that they don't have to go in and play matches? They can still be around the county squad, but they just don't play any matches with the county squad until the Fitzgibbon's over? Well, years ago, the colleges played in the McKenna Cup, the FBD League, mm. the Walsh Cup, the Munster League. It was the Waterford Crystal as it was back then. And you knew as an inter-county manager back then right, I have X, Y, and Z playing for UCC, for UL, for whoever, they're not available to me. So you planned accordingly, you set up development squads, and you made sure, right, now we're going to get a right look at everyone. And these competitions were treated exactly for what they were 
opportunities for the young guys, the really young guys who aren't quite playing Fitzgibbon and Sigerson to stick their hand up and for the likes of the older lads like Eamon and the boys to maybe get an old game into the legs instead of a running session on a Sunday. I think they've moved away from that by kicking the colleges out of a lot of these competitions and all of a sudden the colleges players are getting hit then with college games and with the McKenna Cups and with the things whereas back in the day when the colleges were in the competitions you couldn't be registered with two clubs. Now, to be honest, I don't think the colleges have much business in the competitions. Those colleges players will get enough with the Fitzgibbon and Sigerson. I think your solution there, Nathan, is absolutely perfect. Like, when a guy gets named on a college squad, like all these college squads, they, they were sent in as a deadline today, but provisional squads are sent in before the 31st of December. If a player is registered in that thing, he's not available for these pre-season competitions, if these pre-season competitions are to even have a future. Um, the other alternative, which is the nuclear one, is you get rid of these pre-season competitions altogether and inter-county managements go away and organise challenge games that realistically they're going to get every bit as much benefit out of anyway. Yeah, uh, because that is probably the issue here, I guess, Eamon, that like, pre-season competitions by their very name are pre-season. Like, there's always going to be a pre-season. Th teams are going to want to play games. Managers are going to want to have players for three, four weeks together as a group playing at the very least, challenge matches, and they're still not going to be happy about them in a way in that build-up to the league. It's hard to see a straightforward solution when you're starting the league in the first, well, not even the first week in February now, the last week in January. And it's because there's such an overlap and such a mismatch with club, college, and a county. Pre-season is so different from for each of them and each of them entities. And, you know, until I see the CPA have talked about it, I didn't really give much thought at the time. But until you get the blank canvas, because I don't, we're at a stage now where we can't fix the fixture situation, or we can't talk about pre-season or merits, or we can't talk about club, college, or club or anything. So we just going to start off with a blank page and just go at it. Then uh, that's the that's the only way because we're going to have these conflicts. We're going to have the camera lines, and you'll know, miss out on good memories. We've got some like great memories of being with the Sigerson. We're going to have young players that are getting pulled from county and, you know, having to pick their scholarship. Mm. And, you know, this whole conflict that young players just don't need, constantly in the studies, constantly in the, they have enough pressure going on by being a county player. Um, so we need, a, we need a solution. I think that's the only way out of it is just to go at it from a, from a blank page. Highland Radio have been reporting that Donegal may face sanctions or even fines as a result of pulling out of the Dr. McKenna Cup. And I guess if there's one thing we know the GEA love as much as a fixtures controversy, it's handing out a fine at the end of it. So I imagine Donegal will be well ready for that. I think you touched on a key point there, Eamon. Like, this is a time, particularly for young players, those players who probably are starting out in college and are involved in, in Sigurdsson and are trying to make their way into an inter-county team. They want to be around for the month before league. I imagine they want to be at every training session. They want to be involved in challenge games, but they also want to play Sigurdsson, which is a prestigious competition. And you're putting this unbelievable strain on 19, 20, 21 year olds at what should be a really good, positive time of their life. They've been selected for their inter county team. And those first few weeks when you're together as a squad, you're being pulled and dragged everywhere. And you also take into the fact that a lot of these players have scholarships. So financially, mm. they're, they owe it to the college that they, they give it a priority. But you have a county manager pulling them in. Well, you have X, Y, and Z coming back for National League. How how are you going to get in ahead of them? So you need to. And it's just pressure that they they don't they don't need at all now. Uh, just on that side of it, Jamie, and the scholarships that are there, and obviously universities are handing them out because one of the reasons is that they want their players to play Sigurdsson and Fitzgibbon. Have you been around those type of conversations where players are reminded that they are on a scholarship and there's an expectation that goes with that? Yeah, well, I suppose we don't have uh, as many scholarships in Mary I as some of the bigger colleges. But, um, you know, we have bursaries in that. And I suppose, look, as a smaller college, we're lucky in that, you know, you have a bit more of a rapport built up with the guys. But I know, like, just from knowing inter-county guys and growing up being a player and meeting, knowing lads and being in the dressing room and hearing about these conversations, like, there is an, a, mass, a massive amount of pressure put on guys from, these, from this side of things, I suppose. But I suppose, like, you know, the scholarships primarily... They help guys get an education. And I think something that's getting lost in all of this is that third level GA is about far more than just the competition. Mm. You know, when I started up as Mary I Fitzgibbon manager, I thought my job was to try and win Fitzgibbon Cups. And, you know, within two, three months, I realized that, Jesus, my job is far, far bigger than this. It's about providing a support system for these guys. All of a sudden, you're their link to their education, 
you know, I know John Granger in UCC feels the same, Keith Ricken in CIT, Joe Brennan in UCD. Like, the third level GAA is about far more than just the winning of these really prestigious competitions. And I think that tends to get lost within the whole thing in that third level GAA is about helping these guys to get a college education. I read a piece earlier that Owen wrote for Off the Ball where obviously he was being a smart ass as usual, but he made the comment that who would have known that our amateur players had other things such as educations to fulfill and all this. And it just really hit a note with me that, you know, the third level GA is there to help these guys get an education. Mm. And the GA should be helping these guys with every other aspect of their lives and not making it that bit harder, you know? And um, so I suppose that's just something that, you know, when it comes to these scholarships and that, I think sometimes it gets thrown out there as if these scholarships are something that are hung over guys' heads but it's actually quite the opposite. These scholarships are quite a, an empowering and quite an enabling thing for these guys because I know from my own experience as a young player, I would have found it very hard to hold down a part-time job. I know it talking to inter-county players, holding down part-time jobs with their schedules is an absolute waste of time. So the 500 to 1500 to two grand that they get to help pay their education makes an awful difference in helping these guys get third level educations, you know? And Jamie, when we're talking about the stresses and strains and players being pulled and dragged, and we're just talking there about inter-county and cigarettes, so we're not even getting into what clubs expect, and then, as you say, what should be a focus at this time on education, and we spent a huge amount of time speaking about players' mental health. Are you noticing in the players who are working under you that they are becoming quite stressed, and this is having an effect on them, the constant pressure to be different places at different times? Big time, and not even from me. You know, again, like I said... Like, I talked to Keith Rick and I talked to John Granger and Joe Brennan and all these colleges, and it's the same things are coming up from guys, you know. Uh, guys are talking about whether, you know, whether they're enjoying their, their hurling and their football. You know, we give them massive breaks because we know the strain that they're put on. You know, like, even if you want to look, not so long ago, we had an ESRI report, um, I think it was 17th of December, or something like that, where, you know, one of the big takeaways was the players wanted a shorter season. And another point that came out was not even half of players felt confident to talk to their inter-county manager about their training loading and stuff. And then we see these controversies rear their head every so often. And we wonder, and we're there wondering why are players not confident to talk to their managers? And this is the vibe that comes out, out of all these camps. You know, I just think, I just think that that strain that guys are being put under at the moment is enormous. You know, I know there are certain counties that aren't going to be off. They're literally on from now until the 24th of January, every day of the week. You know, that, that's the training load that's being put on. And I think it's a little bit crazy, but again, all of a sudden you've got these fixtures piled in on top of them now, competitions that essentially mean very little to the player and we're just playing them for the sake of playing them. You know, mm. I, I know Declan said, who fixed the Sigerson in the middle of this campaign? I don't know if Declan knows, but the Fitzgibbon Cup was first presented in 1911. So... um I think it might be the other way around, you know. I think it might be who's fixing these campaigns in the middle of Sigerson campaigns. But look, the bottom line, the, the big the big solution, you know, we talked about bit part solutions because that's all we ever seem to get in the GA. Eamon was right, the CPA was right. A blank page is realistically the only solution mm. that we're going to get to this whole thing, you know. Yeah, and just on that, on the timing of this, actually, the Ulster Central control committee uh, met this afternoon to discuss the request that was there initially to maybe move the two McKenna Cup semi-finals to the Tuesday and they said that an option was there to play the competition in early December which would have facilitated the university teams being included but that was rejected by the Ulster CCC following consultation with the county so it seems the counties did want the McKenna Cup to take place in January. Uh, just before I let you go I do want to talk maybe on the player welfare side of this a little bit more. We had the former Donegal player Luke Keeney on OTB AM just before Christmas. If people might have missed it in the run-up to Christmas it was really interesting I think an important conversation that Luke Keeney had about the injuries uh, that ended his career prematurely and he blamed the relentless training and a pretty unforgiving schedule for that premature ending of his career. Next year you're, you're beginning to make it with the Donegal seniors or when do you, when well, did you make so, it? Right yeah, so then? I suppose 2011 you're a second year UCD um, you're in Sigerson panel now you know you're playing you're actually eligible to play O'Bourne Cup and at that stage, I was still in my second year, 21s. Now, I actually played McKenna Cup for Donegal at the start of the year, and then I also played for UCD in the same thing. Now, technically, you're not meant to do that because it's two different competitions, but because I was on a scholarship, I had to represent them. So, 
your balance is not there, still 19, you know, turn, I was 19 turning 20 that year. Um, and then it wasn't really till 2013 when I got properly called into the Donegal panel, but that's on the back of three years 21s. Yeah, and okay, so that's when, it, is that when it gets the most busy? Because at that point you're doing the proper inter-county training. Yeah, so that's probably when the, like you're really, like, your eyes are opened up to the amount of training that the elite level is at, you know, and at that stage in 13, like it was my final year in college in UCD, so you had three teams there, Dublin Championship, um, Sigerson then, and then you have the same with your club, you have under 21 still, like I was still only 21 at the time, and then your senior championship, and really it was after 2012, so Donegal got to another final, and the, the club championship in Donegal was upheld, so our club four masters, we got to the county semi-final that year, but we played seven games in 28 days. Right. And that's really when I, like, something started in my head or started saying, right, there's something not right here. With your hip. Yeah. Yeah, that was Luke Keeney talking to Jer on OTB AM. You should watch that full interview. It's up on offtheball.com and youtube.com forward slash offtheball. We are joined by Jamie Wall and Emma McGee. Jamie, I know you've got to go because you've got training with Mary I this evening. That is the reality of what we're talking about here with Luke Keeney, of overtraining, overplaying. There's a possibility some of these players in Ulster will be playing four games in ten days, even before we get into the inter-county season, that if somebody doesn't press stop soon, yeah. we're going to lose a full generation of players here. Absolutely, yeah, 100%. And it's something that we deal with an awful lot in Mary Eye, you know, uh, we're playing games and we've got guys like we'd say just I uh, just give you an example one of our guys on intercounty panel you know great guy he'll train morning noon and night he texts us asking Joe should I train tonight and you're kind of saying what have you done this week and he lists out what he's done and you're saying absolutely not like just come down and say hello to the lads and go away home or do you know what don't even bother if you don't want like like but the fact is these guys and you know you touched on it earlier these guys are they're young guys, they want to impress the intercounty manager. So they're not gonna pull they're not gonna pull rank on an intercounty manager when their body's not feeling it. You know, they're some of them are on scholarships, so they feel obliged to play college games. So they're not gonna pull rank there. And if nobody is willing to actually stand up and be a manager and say, Do you know what, the long term health of this player is the most important thing, then we're gonna have a situation where, you know, we spoke about Luke Keeney there. Daryl Conan had a similar scenario at a similar young age down in Clare. And, you know, we've got tons more that maybe didn't reach the same heights as the two lads that are also, you know, pulling out with these injuries at crazy, you know, at, at crazy young ages for, for guys to be retiring with injuries. And I suppose, like you said, it's just a case of somebody shouting stop. I mean, I'm horrified the fact that they thought the solution to this whole Donegal thing was to play the game on Tuesday because the Sigerson's going to be on again next Sunday as well. So, you know, thank God a bit of sense prevailed and Donegal actually pulled out. But, um, you know, I just think it's it's people who aren't on the ground making a lot of decisions. You know, somebody's going to find Donegal for this. And, you know, much as the inter-county manager is probably bottom of my sympathy card list, you know, that's wrong in and of itself too when mm. this is the right decision by Donegal to pull rank and to pull out of it, you know. Well, Jamie, you go easy on them on training tonight. <laughs> there'll, be no, there'll be no hair training for the boys <laughs> alright thanks a lot for taking the call Eamon uh, just before we finish up we were in touch yeah. with the GPA who say that our position would always be the player welfare has to come first players shouldn't be expected to double up on games or be expected to make a choice between one over another a more coordinated fixture calendar is required that's what we're working towards with the fixtures review task force on which we have a representative to ensure situations like this does not arise again going forward We've had many statements like this. We've had lots of people say that this has to stop and we feel that people should sh shout stop. Yet, in a year's time, we're probably going to be having the same conversation all over again. Like, it's just insane that this goes on year after year after year. It's, it's crazy. We think, like, we listen to Luke's thing. Uh, I don't know if he was, too, but listen to his interview. He was talking about that. I remember that lot of games after the 2012 one was going to go, that the club championships run off and this has been an issue whatever county or be it whatever whatever club this has been an issue since then and way before it and we're still talking about it and it's so frustrating to someone I think we have to press the nuclear button and you know the GTA have to come onto that because it's obvious that uh, there's so little regard for the club that the only way to get the attention will be through 
something happen on a county level, and that's where the GPA, until they organise something, until they say the lads, listen, we need to sort this out because clubs being disrespected, the county boys are being disrespected, college boys are being disrespected, and if we keep say coming out of these statements and making these threats, then we'll probably be on the radio in about two years' time talking about the same thing. Mm. Do you get the sense that at, at grassroots level, and not even grassroots because, again, we're diving even deeper into it when we start talking about the club situation, but either at club level, which you're very much involved in now, and I'm sure you're still quite close to a lot of those at county level, that people are ready to press that nuclear button, that if it takes a strike, if it takes some sort of a stand where there are no matches for a number of weeks, that it is a disruptive decision that's made to influence the way these decisions are made in the future. Do you think that the CPA, the GPA, the players, the people on the ground are ready to take that? I definitely think the club players are. Hope they need the county kind of players to row on behind them. And, you know, which county, like, which group of players are going to be the first to step forward and say jeopardise the season and say wins in a row and we're going to maybe, you know, mess up our preparations here to back the club players. And that's, that's what it'll take. It'll take a few county boys to come forward first and say, CPA will need to make a stand and then the, the, the GPA and the county lads will need to roll one behind them but there's definitely a feeling amongst pro players in so much that there's a you know, a resentment against county teams mm. that they've they've interfered with the club game that much that they, they have a resentment against the county game and I see that more and more as the years go on like that you know the people that loved going to Donegal games and went to Donegal every Donegal league championship they don't bother with it at all now because they're just so full of frustration and resentment towards that that county game. Well, maybe you can use your influence and maybe Donegal can be the first county to make that stand. Uh, I have enough of my thing here. <laughs> There's chaos at the house here with the uh, twins and the wee girls, so I think uh, I'll pass the baton on to the next man there. All right. Uh, Eamon, thanks a lot for taking the call. Good, man. Take, Take care. Take it easy. Good luck.